of the channel islands are very important. Um, that's kind of my role here. I hope. Um, so an important ecosystem on the channel islands and on the Ventura County mainland are sandy beaches. Um, so sandy beaches make up 93% of Ventura County coastline, makes up 33% of the coast of Santa Rosa, and 14% of San Marcos Island. So uh, sandy beach is an important habitat uh, utilized by migratory bird species like snowy plover and by a variety of pinnipeds. And the Channel Islands are important because this is one of the few places left in Southern California where the routine function of the ecosystem can happen relatively uninterrupted by man. So um, this is a problem that we're facing today. Um, as we all know, plastics are everywhere. Marine debris is a huge problem. It's an issue of global concern. Um, here's a, a photo of some elephant seals utilizing Sandy Point on Santa Rosa Island. Um, so they're basically laying in trash. Um, this is kind of how this problem project started, we need to address this issue. Um, so there's buoys, there's fishing gear, there's like a plastic toy truck thing, there's water bottles. Um, so just a lot of trash and it's, it's a huge issue. So um, in introduction, the Santa Barbara Channel um, and Ventura County in particular has a lot of factors that are um, aiding in marine debris accumulation. So we have extensive commercial and recreational fisheries in the channel. We have some watersheds and rivers that um, are responsible for accumulating marine debris both on the mainland and on the Channel Islands. And also high populations in the coastal zones all up and down the state. Um, these are all factors that contribute to this problem. So we made use uh, for this project of a historic database of marine debris surveys that were done by the Park Service from 1989 to 1994. And those were done on Santa Rosa and San Miguel Islands. We also wanted to identify some major trends. We wanted to see how um, trends on the islands, on the northern channel islands specifically, um, how they differed from the mainland. We also wanted to see um, how marine debris has changed on Santa Rosa Island since the early 1990s. And we wanted to identify areas that are at high risk of marine debris accumulation and maybe make those areas um, conservation priorities or uh, removal priorities. So this project was um, kind of like a pilot study much bigger marine debris project that is going to actually start this month, um, next few schools. And um, so we had some long-term objectives that um, we're going to go into that study. So the um, long-term objectives for the larger marine debris removal project would be to remove, continue to remove marine debris on the islands and on the mainland. Collect and continue to collect and catalog information on the trends of marine debris as we get more and more uh, surveys and more data. We want to now also monitor and quantify the ecological changes in marine debris removal to see if there's any harm or benefit in removing this trash to the different organisms that um, make use of sandy beaches. We also want to develop an awareness campaign about the derelict fishing here on the islands, um, make both commercial fishermen, recreational fishermen, and the public aware of this issue. And we also want to, which is probably the most important thing, is to cultivate a community of Santa Barbara Channel stewards and do this through outreach and education so that future generations So uh, for this study, we surveyed 13 beaches in total. Uh, six of those were on the mainland, uh, four were on Santa Rosa Island, which were part of the historical survey comparison, and then three were on Santa Cruz Island. Uh, we removed debris from three 100 meter band transects that were um, placed parallel to the shore. Instead of removing trash from the entire beach, which was done in the historic park service surveys, um, we only had to do, we only could do three um, small band transects just because of logistic issues high polluted car out there and it would be hard to bring all the trash back with just four people. So we took a small sample that um, was pretty accurate of what's out there. Um, we then mapped the perimeter of each transect with the GPS unit and then so later we could go back and get the area of the area surveyed and then later calculate the density of trash that um, we found on each beach. So then we went took all the trash off site into the lab and recorded, weighed, measured, and categorized each piece of trash that we So here's a map of the locations of marine debris surveys and removal sites. So as I said earlier, there's six on the mainland um, in the cities of Ventura, Oxnard, and Fort Wayne. So all of these sites were chosen because they represent like a different factor in uh, debris accumulation and also different visitor counts. So 
So, uh, for example, Ormond Beach has relatively low in winter accounts in comparison to Ventura State Beach. Um, some are closer to watersheds, um, freeways, stuff like that. So those, those were all um, pretty interesting. And then we have the Boron Standard of Rosa Island we surveyed twice, um, twice seasonally in the fall and the spring to see a, a seasonal comparison and also to compare those beaches to um, the historic surveys. And then we got to do three on Standard Cruise Island once, and that was just mostly to kind of establish a baseline of what trash is mostly out there on the west end. So here's the categories that we use. Um, these were created from the Park Service Survey, so um, I just reused those so that my data was directly comparable to the historic data. So we have two kinds of non-plastic. So non-plastic is um, basically cloth, metal, anything not plastic, and then um, fishing gear, so buoys, floats, lines, traps, anything fishing related. And then we have three categories of plastics, because like Dorothy said, plastics are everywhere. Very broad. Um, we have miscellaneous plastics, which is any like hard fragment, bubble pieces, um, just unidentifiable, unidentifiable plastic items. And then we have personal effects, which is basically anything you use on a person, so like sunglasses, toothbrush, cigarette butts, stuff like that. And then packaging, which is like your water bottles, plastic bags, etc. So some results we found that the composition of marine debris has in fact changed on Santa Rosa Island since the early 90s. Um, in that change, we found a significant increase in the proportion of debris that was fishing gear. So a lot more fishing gear on the island today than there was um, 27 years ago or so. Um, there's also substantial differences in island and mainland marine debris types. And um, there's no clear seasonality in uh, mainland debris accumulation. So here's just to uh, orient you guys for a second. This is a graph of the marine debris composition on Santa Rosa Island. On the x-axis, we have the um, category of trash, and on the y-axis, we have the composition and percentage, and each quadrant is a different beach that we surveyed. So um, the one trend that we did see was that fishing gear has increased, even by just a small amount, sometimes more on other beaches, um, across all four beaches that we surveyed, and the blue is the historic surveys, and the red is the current ones. Um, everything else kind of varied, but that was the one trend that we saw and thought that was really interesting. Um, in terms of mainland marine debris, we found that there was no clear seasonality in, in the trash that we found. Um, so on the x-axis is the beaches that we surveyed. On the y-axis is the number of islands found. And the fall is in orange, the winter is in blue. And I thought that you would see more in winter across all beaches, but we found that um, different beaches and in terms of their position and their littoral cell, it depends on trash that comes in the winter versus the fall. So that was kind of an interesting thing about Ventura County marine debris. Um, we also found some obvious differences in the composition of trash on the island versus the mainland. So this was like small, hard plastic, miscellaneous plastics kind of dominated all mainland trash. And, um, and while on the island you see large lobster traps that have been there for almost so long, and um, that was like a main thing that we were seeing that we weren't seeing on the mainland at all. So um, one possible explanation for why we're seeing more um, marine debris that is fishing here on the islands um, could be that because lobster fishing has increased in California over the past uh, few years. So this is a graph from the California Fish and Wildlife Lobster, Lobster Fishery Management Plan that came out in April of this year. Um, so right here on the x-axis, you have the season start here, lobster season start here, and then on the y is the amount of total commercial landings. So if you just look from 1990 to now, this is definitely increased. So that could be a possible reason why lobster traps and buoys and ropes are now the dominant items that we're finding on Santa Rosa Island and San Cruz Island. So um, takeaway from this is that consistent monitoring of marine debris is important. I think it's an important tool that we should utilize in um, uh, keeping track of the health of our oceans and coasts. So for example, it provides valuable information um, for management, changes in policy, consumer culture are evident if you look at the trash that you find. So 